be sure to watch today's video to the end because we're going to talk about shape-shifting strategies for overcoming those pesky leadership principle interviews I'm sure you've heard of the star framework I will cover the two star framework and ultimately we're just going to share insights to help you optimize your chances of getting that offer let's look at the interview difficulty of Amazon relative to say Google and Meta and what I'm going to do here is just pick say if there's one thing I'll tell you definitely need to be good at to, to stand out and one thing that's quite unique about the process with Meta speed coding speed reasoning speed thinking speed very crucial if you don't have that you're probably not going to succeed but Google is all about that thought process or well, let me phrase it differently the thought process really matters and you need to be able to think logically to an extent creatively but be able to articulate your thoughts with Amazon the deal breaker tends to be the leadership principles. Do you have these experiences that conform to the leadership principles? If you do an Amazon, first few stages would be the, an online assessment and a phone screen. Online assessment, standard you know, type of hacker rank style challenges, you're probably gonna have two challenges. These things vary, but look, if you're doing an online assessment in a certain time of the year, it's most likely other people have done it and the questions, the questions probably leaked. So it, it's very easy to get lucky and see things you've seen before so the online assessment could be very easy for the phone screen it's you know leadership principles and one coding challenge typically um i'll say key tip there is just make sure you don't let your verbose answers to leadership principles eat into the time for the phone screen there's an on-site and it's typically like four rounds each 55 minutes and you may end up having two interviewers, maybe one main interviewer and then maybe another interviewer who might be a bit more silent than the main one. And the areas covered, for sure, data structures and algorithms. There's also rounds where they care if you can write logical and maintainable code, so code that's easy to read and understand. So things like variable naming, how you um, encapsulate your, your data, you know, how you break things down into different classes and so on, those things matter. There's rounds where they care about your problem solving skills, so your ability to you know, be given a problem where the solution isn't obvious straight away and then think through, identify solutions, pick the best one, you know, implement it. Low level design, system design. You should expect at least one system design round if you're SD2, SD3. Um, for sure, the more senior you are, <laughs> you know, potentially you might um, even have a bit more system design rounds but mostly I see people with one system design round all I'll say is you know talk to your recruiter and ask your recruiter and they'll tell you exactly what you're going to face leadership principles most important you're not going to escape this you should expect to have this asked in every single round leadership principles at Amazon are really important most candidates I see in the interview process tend to underestimate the importance of behavioral interviews in general maybe they'll allocate just one day or two days or, or try to wing it I'd say, first of all, that's definitely a bad strategy, especially at Amazon. They have 16 leadership principles and it's a big deal breaker if you don't pass this. Even if your other rounds are all perfect, if you have a mediocre, if you have mediocre responses to the leadership principle behavioral sort of questions, it's highly unlikely you're going to pass. Um, like I said before, you can have up to five per round. And be prepared to be interrogated and not necessarily in an um, aggressive sort of interrogation but they be prepared to have interviewers you know really listen and try to understand your story and dig through so they're gonna ask follow-up questions so how are you gonna handle this I'll say first thing make sure you answer the actual question asked what I've seen people do is they try to spin maybe a story they have that maybe might be adjacently adjacent well, how do I put this, adjacently related, and they try and spin it off, pass it off as answering the question I was asked, but that wouldn't work. That was just gonna, that's just gonna waste time, and that's gonna irritate the interviewer. So please make sure you answer the actual question asked. The next thing I'll say, definitely don't lie. The thing about the truth is that it's consistent, but lies aren't. So when you're prodded, and when they keep asking questions, um, if it's a lie, it's highly likely it's gonna, you know, there's gonna be a hole, there's gonna be a contradiction. So please avoid lying. I'm a big fan of having versatile experiences. So that's what I mean by shape-shifting experiences. So for example, let's say you have, you're gonna get asked 
five leadership principle questions per round. This is will necessarily be the case, but be prepared for this. So there's 16 principles and it's probably a good idea to have two to three stories per principle, right? So in the worst case, if you did this, then you would have 32 to 48 unique stories. I would say that that's a bit overwhelming and that's a lot of things to remember. I'm a big fan of versatile stories. So let's say you have five st um, leadership principle questions per round. So let's say you have five experiences. So these experiences could be like very long-term sort of projects which were quite, which exposed you to a lot of things. So in that project, you may have, you know, simplified something, um, driven some innovation, disagreed, you know, been involved in a lot of decision-making and disagreed, you know, in certain cases and so on and so forth. So if you have like five of these experiences and if, if, if you have these experiences where they can be mapped to, if possible, all 16 principles, then you're gonna have to remember five of your experiences. And then in each round, you can just pick each experience speak a different experience for each question essentially and because each experience can be mapped to any of the stories if you in subsequent rounds you can use the same experience but use a different angle of it so ultimately i would say in the worst case you're looking to have 32 to 48 sort of unique stories and in the best case you know five and that'll be like the most efficient so somewhere in between would be good so the fewer experiences you need to remember the easier it'll be for you but just remember again that use true stories because they do ask follow-up questions so if it's a real if, if something that really happened it's easier to remember so you have to do a lot of reflecting on your past most people have heard of the star framework but we're going to talk about the two star framework in relation to answering these leadership principle questions so if you i think most people have heard of the star framework you know which governs how it's a recommendation on how you deliver your stories for and how you demonstrate competencies in behavioral interviews so you know you describe the situation the task if there was a task the action you took and the result and it, it's just allows you to be very precise and succinct it's like a bullet point style okay this was a situation this is what the task was this is the action i took and this is the result so it allow it's a good framework for allowing you to succinctly express um tell a story essentially so that the interviewer can understand but it's one thing to have all your stories, you know, expressed in this form, and I do recommend you do that. But also, how do you prepare? You should make sure it's succinct, especially because in Amazon, you have your leadership principle questions asked, you know, along in the same round where you're dealing with coding or, you know, system design or something. So you want to make sure that the leadership principle section doesn't eat into the time for the coding or whatever the other round is, because the interviews don't necessarily like guard your time so you have to be very proactive about this so you need to be succinct you need to time things to make sure that they're short as possible make sure these stories are authentic like i said before true stories and make sure you rehearse so it's one thing to write your stories down in a star format so the delivery style but it's another thing to prepare so make sure you prepare your rehearsing the, these true stories and you time them and you make sure they're succinct I'll say if you can do a story in two minutes or two and a half minutes, that's pretty good. So with regards to the interview conditions, so with Amazon, the interviewers are, they actually go through rigorous training. So you're gonna have professional interviewers. So I wouldn't worry about an interviewer ruining my experience. That's really rare for Amazon. In terms of code execution, it's highly unlikely you'll be able to run your code. They will have like a sort of real-time code editor, um, but you pro most likely won't be able to run your code. Uh, the time constraints, the, what I'll say is you will have enough time to solve the problem. It's not like really tight like meta. So you have enough time to think, to get hints from the interviewer and you know adopt those hints. Um, the questions, I'll say for the online assessments, it's very possible that they've leaked online and you see them. However, for the on-site, let's just say repeat questions aren't a thing. So with like meta, it's well known that meta tag questions, say on lead code, come up. With Amazon, you can't really expect that you would see a question you've seen before. That may be the case, but uh, don't expect that. So you have to be very comfortable with dealing with 
problems you haven't seen before or um, variations of problems you've seen before that are in, dis in disguise. Um, of course, leadership principles in every ra round. I've mentioned this time overflow risk, so just make sure you're very good at time allocation and managing your time and tracking that time in interview, making sure you have enough time for the coding challenge or system design or whatever it is. The bar raise around. Now, this interviewer is quite special. They actually have the ability to block a hiring decision. So if you have four interviews and the th three interviews say three interviewers say hire, if the bar raiser is not impressed, they can actually block the hiring. So you will know where your bar raiser around it is, and you have to make sure you take that seriously. Like that is one you definitely have to pass. Um, and the idea of the bar raiser is that Amazon are just trying to make sure that the quality of candidates they're getting are getting better over time. So they have this thing where you know the person coming in is at least better than 50% of the people they have. I, to be honest, I don't believe you can objectively measure that. But the key thing is whatever your bar raiser round is, that is a must pass. That's the key thing. Um, you'll definitely have leadership principles, and it could be coding, it could be system design. You know, uh, tagged along that. So just keep that in mind. In terms of like strategies for tackling these interviews, I already have these two videos which cover like the essential attributes you need for acing these competitive interviews. And then I cover a framework for actually approaching the interviews, like what um, order should you do things to optimize your chances of passing and minimizing mistakes. So do check those videos out. If you're able to clear all the rounds and the bar raiser doesn't veto your hiring, then you're in really. And then you just need to find a team. And I mean, Amazon offers a pretty decent not the highest of the big techs, but still pretty high. You know, if you start there in your 20s, you know, before you're 30, you're most likely going to be a millionaire, uh, provided you stay away from drugs and gambling. But yeah, you can check details on conversation for levels of FYI. That would help you, you know, when it comes to the offer negotiation stage. I know that, especially given their leadership principle of frugality, they're not um, so great with negotiations. But if you have a competing offer, you know, definitely let them know. If you've gone this far, I've got a gift for you, 10% off mock interviews or co-editioning we help candidates prepare for interviews. And one of the things we offer is human loop interviews that simulate you know, realistic interview conditions. So if you've got Amazon or really any other company interview, you can apply this coupon to get 10% off. So it's for the first 100 customers and it's for any target company, not just Amazon. Check out coeditioning.com and uh, also, check out our discord community um, it's an interview prep optimization discord server we have workshops on system design low level design coding behavioral interviews you can use it to find a study buddy you can find other people on the same boat like interviewing across different companies and you can share experiences dm each other and so on yeah so check that out and of course codishing.com where we've got resources to help you with interview readiness assessments. You can check how ready you are. You can do mock interviews. We've got some learning content. Um, we're adding crash courses on low level design, system design. We've got an AI mock interviewer. We're thinking of doing a cracking the coding interview series on Microsoft. They don't seem to be hiring as much as Amazon right now, but if you're interested in this, give a like, leave a comment, and definitely subscribe if you want to be notified.